Hello all, welcome to the new pyrolysis lab. This is my former greenhouse. I am an avid gardener and I used to start seedlings in here, but um, as I got busier, nowadays I just do the most laissez-faire form of gardening, which is when you just direct sow everything. So I don't really use this greenhouse anymore and I reckon, you know what, instead of just, you know, scrapping the metal and, and pyrolysizing the, the plastic uh, cover. How about I just use it and put move my reactor and everything in here so I don't have to always worry about covering it up during the rain and also I can run it during the rain. So that's what I'm doing this for now. So what are we doing today? Well today is going to be a good old raw dog and chemistry episode. The first ever pure chemistry episode we're going to have on this channel. We're going to be converting this oil here, this pyrolysis oil, we're going to be converting it into a cleaner fuel chemically right now the best way to do this is through fractional column distillation just like they do in oil refineries but i don't have one of those right now i'm still building one right so in the meantime we're going to chemically convert this into a cleaner fuel via the same processes they use for biodiesel like deesterification, washing with water and drying okay so what we have here is in the back we have this right here this iso heat i don't really know all the specifics it's also to refer to as dry gas and this stuff um would then be mixed with sodium hydroxide which by the way i have double layer of gloves and goggles on for this if you have ever used sodium hydroxide before you know damn well why i why i do um so we mix it with this stuff and then it's going to form a, a very strong base that is made up of uh, methanol. And so for anybody that doesn't know, sodium hydroxide is a very strong base. Um, and it's extremely caustic and you don't want it in your eyes, you don't want it down your throat, you don't want it anywhere really. So, you know, you I could be even safer by wearing some sleeves. However, I don't think I'll be splashing it, but if I do, I'm gonna wash it off of me immediately. Um, but most certainly never in your eyes, okay? So always wear goggles, not even safety glasses, like goggles when messing with this stuff, okay? So first that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pyrolysis oil here, right? And we're gonna we're gonna pour it into this this other um, container, but we're gonna strain it with this paint strainer. These like two paint strainers put together so that way we can get any big clumps out because I know there's some big clumps in there. Um, now before we get started, I do wanna know uh, anyone want some cashews? You want some cashews, Mike? Come on, just take a couple. They're good stuff, right? No? Oh, fine. My cashews. All right, so let's get started. So this is a, a 190 micron plastic, uh, not plastic, but paint strainer. And we're just going to pour, we're going to fill it up about halfway because I don't, you know, when we make this solution of this iso heat and sodium hydroxide, we want some leeway room in this container. Um, so we're going to pour this in fill this up about halfway um, I hope you can see but the stuff has a really nice viscosity to it it's really light and um, yeah so we're gonna we have that in there now and it's just straining through so as you can see we have it in there and it's going through it's straining through it's just dripping right now um, I could speed it up by stirring it but I honestly I don't give a damn take as long as it really wants to I can wait so this is gonna get these big clumps out because I don't, I'm sure it didn't show on the camera but there were some big wax clumps in this oil um, and I will let you guys know that anything within this process like all the laboratory waste chemical waste these gloves all that type of stuff paper towels it will all go back into the reactor. So th this is going to be completely zero waste, okay? And any contaminated water or contaminated anything is all going to be dealt with properly. Because that's my motto. You know, why would we do it if we're just going to be creating waste and pollution? So we're just going to set this on here so the rest of this just drips back in here. And we're, we're done with this now. So this is going to go away now because we don't need that anymore. So we got right here now we have a container half a container full of strained pyrolysis oil 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to actually go into the more complex chemical processes. Just wipe up all some of this oil that's spilled on the table here. Put that in the reactor. So now we're going to go into the complex chemical processes. Now we're going to go into it now. So first we're going to take this, take this stuff, and we're going to pour 250 mil in this measuring cup. So let me open it up now. Blah blah blah. So 250 mil. Alright, so 250 mil. And actually a little bit over. Let me pour some back. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know. I want to get pretty close to 250 mil because I'm going off a recipe here. Alright, that's pretty good. Put this back over here. It's about half the container of this stuff. Now we need to measure 10 grams of sodium hydroxide. So we're going to go ahead and get this scale going. Um, oh, I thought my scale broke for a little bit. I was like, oh no. Alright, so we're going to get the scale going. I can't see. I don't know what it's doing. It's kind of acting up. Won't lie to you. Okay. Well, I think my scale is broken. Wow. Yeah, it's... It's not doing anything. I mean, it's turning on, but... Wow, that is that is a shock, honestly. Well, I went to go get my mom's scale, the one she uses for her eating plans. Seems like this one is broken too. Actually, maybe we're in luck. Let me see. Oh, it works. Okay, it's in ounces. Let's see if I can change it to grams. Grams. Perfect. All right. So we got the scale. So let me just pour what I poured in here in this top. All right, so first we're gonna measure this. 233 grams. So now we're going to pour in 100 grams of sodium hydroxide. So it's gonna be 333 grams. About, that's what we're shooting for. 278, yeah, a little bit more. Three hundred eleven, a little bit more. Three hundred thirty. Ooh, almost there. Three hundred thirty-four. That's close enough. All right. So about a hundred grams of sodium hydroxide here. Hope you can see. We are now. Please don't tell my mama I used her her um, calorie counting scale for some chemistry. Please, she will beat my ass. Okay. Um, okay, so, got that done. Now we're going to pour this sodium hydroxide in this ethanol solution. Now this is the more dangerous part. Is that 200? Yeah. Alright. Yeah, this is the more dangerous part. You don't want this stuff splashing on you. You don't want it doing all that. So I'm going to pour it in, and we're going to mix it, right? It's going to be an exothermic reaction, meaning it will make heat. So that's why I'm doing this in glass. I wouldn't do this in plastic anyway. And we're just going to stir it and mix it all together. So we want to get all the clumps out of there because I heard if you leave clumps in, you end up just going to make soap in the end. So you want to get them all out. It's, it is dissolving slowly, but it's taking its time. You know, they say God coming, she's just taking her time, right? <laughs> you know, um... And then on top of that, they say we gotta stir this into the pyrolysis soil for like, on well, the video they said like 30 minutes. So I'm not gonna stir it for 30 minutes. You best believe I don't. I, you know, uh, that's why they have magnetic stir bars, which I don't have one. But I'm not stirring that for 30 minutes. I'm sorry, it's just not how I merely rock around here. So I'm gonna, you know, do this, and I'll be back. Goodness, stuff is not wanting to dissolve. 
I might need to add some heat to it. Get my hot plate. Alright, so I got the hot plate here. Hopefully this will help. I actually do want to go get a fan because this is making quite a bit of fumes in here. So I've been stirring the absolute hell out of this thing for the past 20 or so minutes and like it's, I think it reached its saturation point. I think 100 milligrams of sodium hydroxide is too much for how much ethanol I put in here because I got it white and cloudy and milky. So that, it's dissolved something, but there's just a lot of sodium hydroxide I cannot stir in. So all that matters is that this is alkaline. So I have some pH strips here, and we're gonna see if this is alkaline, how basic it is. Yeah, it's it's basic enough. It's that's around a 14. So. That's definitely more than enough. I think that we just have too much of the stuff, the sodium hydroxide, and it's reached its saturation point. So we're at this point, we're gonna pour this into this container here, through a strainer, just to strain out any of the potential like pieces of wood that could have gotten in there, or any big crystals that are still in there. And you can actually see now how much damn sodium hydroxide was left over. I was just sat there stirring for like, 20 minutes like I'm like yo what's going on why is it not going through you know so I was like am I doing something wrong and maybe I am you know this is my first time doing it but that stuff was not going through no matter what I did so you know I'm just making do with the situation I'm not going to be stirring this thing for 50 hours I'm sorry it's just not happening especially when it's already alkaline and it's uh it's already white and cloudy and we know it's dissolved some of it for sure so you know this could be user error you know I'll, I'll, I'll take the blame but at the same time, um, I'm not going to just be here for so long. I need a magnetic stirrer before you catch me doing that mess. So we got the oil nice and hot as well. All right, so the next steps are that we are going to pour this solution of alkaline ethanol or methanol into this here, um, this here pyrolysis oil. And then we're gonna stir it in. And what this is going to do is this is going to precipitate uh, the, gl the glycerin in here as well as it's going to precipitate many of the, the contaminants. So through this process there will be a separation that occurs. There, will be a, there should be a darker, heavier oil made up of glycerin and stuff at the bottom and there'll be a lighter oil on top so it'll look nice and pretty in theory now I know this isn't the same as like vegetable oil so maybe it'll barely be any visible difference but we're gonna see that's why we're doing this right we're doing these processes now I will say immediately I didn't notice a color change this the, this oil now is more reddish it's more brown reddish now it seems so really what you have to do is you have to do this and you have to just let this thing sit for like they say 24 hours. Um, now I can actually smell some strong odor of like, yeah, it's really it's a really strong odor of stuff. Um, I really should have a mask on for this crap, honestly. A respirator, I won't lie. It's really, really strong odor of like ethanol and pyrolysis oil. So there's definitely a, a reaction occurring and there's bubbles in there too. So there's definitely a, a reaction occurring with this. So I'm just going to make sure it's mixed really good before we just leave it to set because when we leave it to set, you know, we really can't do much more to it, right? Have you ever in your life felt like a dummy? Well, that's been me. I was over here telling you guys we're going to get the glycerins out. We're going to get the glycerins out. There are no glycerins in freaking pyrolysis oil. That's exclusive to vegetable oil and vegetable oil only. But anyways, we've had this thing sitting for about a couple hours now, and not much has changed to the color of it, um, but I will say it's a lot less viscous. That could be because of the, the, uh, the, what's the word? I forgot what the heck you call those things, the paint strainers. Um, but I also do want to show you 
um, even though the color is pretty much the same, some stuff has precipitated, okay? It's very hard to see, but when I stir this around, you can see there's some heavy stuff down there. Um, now, I did add a little bit more of this uh, glycerin stuff or ethanol, whatever, and I'm going to add a little bit more um, lye. Now, this is lye water I have in here. I call it death drink. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit more because I did use a pH strip on this, on the oil itself, and it was actually, I think it was a little bit acidic. So I'm just going to add a little bit of this lye water and stir that in. I don't really expect this to change the colors of this, but I've actually had some help from some of you guys. I'm sending me some videos on some other processes I can do to make this, uh, to decolor this. I want this to be, you know, brown or clear. As you can see, every time that we add uh, any type of hydroxide in there, you see that the top becomes uh, more brown, right? And, you know, it starts to bubble. So something is definitely happening in there for sure. Now, after you let this thing set for a little bit, you do want to wash it with water. So you can see when I added the water, there's actually uh, two distinct layers. We have this more brown layer at the bottom and this darker brown layer at the top. And there's a lot of contaminants and heavy things in this bottom layer. But at the same time, I'm not sure if that means like just the top is oil and all that is just contaminants or, or what that necessarily means. So let me know guys before I progress and do anything different. Um, I know I said I'm going to cool this. I haven't got the time to do that. I'm about to head out of town, but uh, there we have it. I had the water, first water wash, and uh, yeah, see you guys next time.